Hello again. I am at the Roth and Bueller Honeybee Research Laboratory on the Ohio State University campus, and today I'm going to be doing mite tests. In 1964, Dr. Walter Rothenbuehler, who the Honeybee Research Laboratory is named in honor of, released his seminal research on the behavioral genetics of nest cleaning honeybees. He, his research was in relation to American fowl brood, but it very much has proven to be applicable to things like the Varroa mite as well. So it is uh, doubly honorable to be doing this, not only, uh, not only to make sure that these bees are healthy, but to do them in fact uh, at a place named after a researcher whose groundbreaking work helped us to understand the idea. In fact, he coined the phrase hygienic behavior. Varroa destructor is without doubt the parasite with the single largest effect on colony health and survivability. Not only does it weaken individual bees by feeding on their fat bodies, but it is also a vector for a host of viral diseases. I am going to be using the alcohol wash testing method for Varroa. Uh, you can also use a powdered sugar or a low foaming soap, such as an automotive windshield washer fluid. Um, I'm using a, you know, I, I know there are bee supply companies that sell devices for making these uh, tests. I've used uh, just a couple of old food jars. You'll notice I put a mark on where the half cup measure is. Uh, a half cup measure is just about 300 bees. Mite levels of 3% or more typically indicate that treatment is needed. We use formic acid at the lab, and you should be sure to perform another test within a week of treatment to make sure that that treatment was effective. So before performing my alcohol wash test, I'm going to go ahead and use this, uh, this brood cap scratcher to open up a few broods and make a visual inspection. Now, this is a less reliable sampling method since it's difficult to determine what percentage of the brood is infected. Varroa reproduce inside of capped brood cells, so their population levels can increase drastically in the fall, just as a colony is starting to prepare for winter. Well, I just pulled a sampling of drone brood from High 45, and it doesn't even take a magnifier to see that there are Varroa inside of those. So let's go a little deeper. Let's uh, perform our alcohol wash test and see how bad the infestation is. I will be using the testing protocol recommended by the Honeybee Health Coalition, and I will place a link to their Tools for Varroa Management Guide in the text below. It is important for every beekeeper to test their bees at least four times a year between July and October, particularly at the points of peak population, which right now in our part of the country, we are at that point. We've just finished our honey harvest. and also during a population decrease during the fall. An absolute joy to see the growth of this colony of bees in earlier videos. I'm sure you heard the worry in my tone of voice as I looked at these, but it is marvelous to see these growing. These look like just happy, hardworking, wonderful bees. So, Let's open, up, uh, let's open up one of these frames and we will do a mite test. The first thing, of course, when pulling out a brood frame is you wanna check for the queen. You wanna make sure, especially since we're going to be doing a, an alcohol wash test, which does sacrifice bees, we wanna make sure that the queen is not on this frame we're also looking for brood. Excellent, both capped and uncapped brood. That means that the bees here are nurses predominantly, and those nurse bees are going to be in close proximity to the emergence of their younger sisters, which means they're going to be in close proximity also to the emergence of Varroa. Varroa require honeybee colonies and specifically capped brood to be able to manage their life cycles. Now that I have my bees 
in a jar and covered with alcohol. I am going to vigorously shake them for two minutes. You need to shake them for at least a minute. Let me, uh, let me in fact take a moment to set the timer on my watch for two minutes. It is important to maintain a consistent protocol across testing so that your results will be measurable and comparable. The alcohol serves to dislodge the varroa mite from the body of the bee. And then we've got a small screen in between the two containers. The alcohol and the varroa mites will pass through it to the bottom. All right, my alarm just went off for the two minute mark. We are now going to leave these bees set for the next three minutes. Undisturbed, that is going to allow the mites to get washed away from their connection to the bees' bodies. And then we will move on to counting the bees in just three minutes. During that time, I'm going to put the hive back together here. All right, it has been three minutes worth of soaking time after two minutes of agitation. Let's go ahead and strain out the alcohol and any varroa mites we may see. That looks like one. As you can see, the mite is just barely the size of a pinhead, but that is definitely a varroa. I counted five varroa mite out of hive 147. It was again given a half formic treatment on 625. And uh, come with me over here. My next hive, I think, also received a half treatment. Let's take a look. I am looking at hive number 93. 93 also received a half treatment on 625. It'll again be interested to see whether or not that's knocked down the mite count. Hive 52 is next, and I can't help but notice a large number of dead bees in front of that hive. So we will have to take a look inside, see what it looks like. We additionally see one, two, three, four, and on the other side, a fifth cup. Those are made for a supersedure process in which the, the working bees decide that their queen isn't laying appropriately and behaving appropriately, so they dismiss her. None of those have eggs or jelly in them, so they might be practiced, but having seen that other queen cup, I'll continue to look a little more carefully. We are moving on to hive number 45. These bees seem to be very calm. Certainly 52 was acting up, seeming as though it had some problems. And its mite count was six from a very small number of bees. I didn't want to take too many bees from it. It was looking in such bad shape with all those dead bees in front. So 45, thankfully, is looking a lot better. Let's give it a closer look. Well, I've tested nine hives today for Varroa mites. I will compile the numbers and uh, put a little addendum on this video so you can see how well the apiary is doing here at Rothenbuehler. What I'm going to do, I believe I mentioned, is instead of just assuming 300 bees in each sample, because a couple of these, particularly the fifth test that I did for hive number 54, there were so few bees inside that hive and there were so many dead bees outside of it. I didn't want to take a huge sample of those bees. I just wanted to take maybe just uh, about a hundred or so. So th that will allow, by counting the number of bees in each of these samples, it will allow me to calculate exactly what the percentage of varroa mite coverage is. And I will probably do a second wash on these when I bring them back inside. You know, even when I'm doing something like a test for parasitic infections of mite 
I have to say, this is such a marvelous place to be. It is such a wonderful opportunity to come here and spend time in the apiary at the Rothenbuehler lab. And as I started this video by talking about Walter Rothenbuehler and his coining of the phrase hygienic behavior, let's, uh, let's take a look at these numbers and see how hygienic our colonies are here. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you take away from it the fact that all beekeepers should perform varroa mite testing as part of an integrated pest management system because even the best kept hive, even feral bees are uh, affected by varroa mite and it's something that you need to definitely take care of and watch otherwise you're going to run into trouble with your hives.